So here's a question for you this morning. What's behind children's boredom, sense of entitlement, and lack of patience? Well, we discuss these hot topics with our creative parenting expert, Nikki Bush, this morning. Nikki, thank you very much. These are hot topics. They are, you wow. and they are really, really impacting on society in a very big way. Yeah. So we are seeing a decline in social, emotional, and academic functioning in children, more and more children in therapy, and a greater inability for parents to be the boss in yeah. their home. So what impact does this, I'm bored, uh, I can't wait, uh, I, I want, have on children if it's not managed? Well, ultimately, these things become big obstacles in children's lives because, um, for example, the ability to wait to handle delayed gratification is one of the biggest predictors of mm. success in the future. Learning how to work under the stress of having to wait um, is huge. Learning to put in all the work and the effort. On the technology side, it's just so easy. You have to do less effort mm. when you're engaging with technology. Um, and there's the sense of entitlement that children are getting everything they want, when they want it, how they want it. Yeah. Now, technology, obviously, I mean, uh, I heard you saying that now quite a couple of times as well. Is that the main reason? Um, that we are kind of looking at these kind of topics, the boredom, um, uh, the entitlement, and, and that's coming to the surface more and more. Um, yes and no, but largely because technology is on tap. Mm. There is so much choice at the press of a button. Nobody has to wait. Uh, nobody has to apply their imagination to anything. Yeah. And it is that instant gratification. And if I don't like what I'm engaging with now, this game, this TV program, I just use my remote control and move on yeah. to something else. I don't have to finish anything. Yeah. I can just move on until I find something that satisfies me. Yeah. And so we don't have to go through that sort of uh, grind and that waiting period. Um, so, you know, and, and or finish anything before we get to the end. In fact, we never have to get to the end. Exactly. And I mean, there's something quite quite magical about teaching your children to, to wait for something and then have that reward. For instance, I took my boys on, on a flight to Joburg the other day, and um, you know they, they were very excited because they haven't actually been on a plane before, especially my youngest. That's hugely exciting. And, and, and you know what? I, they were talking about this nonstop for months because I booked the tickets like three months it was in an adventure advance, you know? in the making. But we, we, we started counting it down you know, on, on, on the calendar, and they could literally see. And, and the moment when it happened, there was this huge reward. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like you can't put it into words. It's a little bit like those advent calendars for Christmas. Absolutely. You know, the those days before Christmas, countdown, countdown, countdown. Yeah. And children waiting is so very, very important because let's face it, in the adult world, things don't happen overnight. We yeah. don't succeed overnight. Although we, we want to. <laughs> we work towards our goals, you know, slowly but surely. We put in effort, we put in energy, we put in our, ourselves, we invest yeah. ourselves in something. And if our children don't learn how to wait, don't learn how to deal with, we call it frustration tolerance, okay, to cope with their feelings of frustration. So coping with your feelings is a very important part of maturing uh, mm. and becoming an adult who can deal with boredom and frustration. And when we constantly hand over devices, it short circuits that emotional development because they don't actually have to deal with their frustration, yeah. their disappointment. Uh, yeah. their despondency, their irritation, yeah. <laughs> yeah. because they don't ever actually feel those things for more than a second, and then we just pass over a device. Yeah, which could mean trouble for the future, definitely. <laughs> this is a big topic, Nikki. Thank you very much. We're going to continue with Nikki a little bit later on this morning. It's my feel-good breakfast show. So we are continuing a very important topic right now with our creative parenting expert, Nikki Bush. Hot parent topics that's coming to the surface. We're talking about boredom, entitlement, and impatience when it comes to our children. Nikki, thank you very much for joining us once again. Um, yeah, big topic. We spoke about it earlier. Hot topic as well and what it can mean for the future when the children grow up if they don't. Uh, if they're not allowed to go and process those feelings of being bored and being irritated. But right now, I need to ask you this. Do you feel that children's now, children nowadays are, are kind of dictating their parents in many ways? In a way, they are, Ewan, because we're allowing children to become fussy and to become very choosy. We give them, A, too many choices, and B, they get away with them. And how often I sit down at a table with parents with young children who've got two or three of them, and they say, what yeah. would you like for lunch? And I'm going, really? Are you going to go and serve them each an individualized, customized meal? Are you mad? <laughs> I mean, busy parents, are you mad? 
Um, so we are allowing children to get away with things like what they want to eat, when they want to go to bed, what they want to wear. And I'm not saying there shouldn't be choice. Yeah. But there needs to be very limited choice. And in certain instances, no choice. Yeah. This is what's for dinner. This is what's for lunch. If you don't want this, then there's bread and water. It's quite simple. <laughs> you yeah. can't then go and have, you know, your favorite meal. Yeah. So, you know, we need to learn to get along with the crowd every now and again because yeah. it's part of life. You're not exactly. always going to be able to have a customized experience. Absolutely, especially at a young age where you have to really hone in. Of course, you can slack off a little bit as they get older and develop sure. their own feelings and choices. But I need to ask you this as well. How important is it to, to make sure that there's a balance between having fun and being bored at uh -huh. times? Because I know you spoke about it previously as well, that it is important for children to be bored at times. Good question, Ewan, because I think what we do these days is we fall into a trap of keeping our children in a state of perpetual happiness mm. because we don't actually have time for a meltdown. And we think it's our role to be their friend and to keep them happy. And, you know, God forbid our children experience the uh, frustration and disappointment that mm. comes with a lot of lessons in life. So, um, you know, we, we tend to keep them happy, but that's almost artificial because life is not a continuum of happiness. Yeah. Life has its ups and has and its, its downs. downs. And they need to deal with that. And they yeah. need to deal with that. And so, yes, you know, you can have fun on this device. And you can go outside and jump on the trampoline and have fun. But you know what? There are also things that need to be done, like the monotonous tasks of folding the laundry and tidying up the toys and washing the dishes and stuff like that. Yeah. That's monotonous work. Yeah. But it also teaches children work ability. Absolutely. In all jobs. There's a boredom factor. There's parts of our jobs that are very exciting. But a lot of what we do is underpinned by graft and hard work and re repetitive activities. Mm. You know, it's not all about the hype. And that's what children need to learn from an early age. In order to have this fun and wonderful life, we also have to do all these things that prepare our home and our family for yeah. what comes next. So last words of advice, Nikki, for our parents out there. How do we prevent our children falling victim of boredom, of things like impatience? <laughs> this is a muscle. The brain is a muscle like any other muscle in the body. It can be trained and retrained and untrained. Yeah. So if you wanted to teach your child to cycle or to ride a bike, you would teach them to cycle. If you want to teach them um, to, to be patient, you know, you teach them how to be patient. You teach them everything. Yeah. So, you know, it's not about your child just being that. They learn how to be those yeah. things. So make sure you take control and you teach your children these necessary skills yeah. so that they don't suffer yeah. from boredom, so that they don't suffer from impatience, mm -hmm. and so that they become... Children who can just go with the flow. Yeah. Life is not a catastrophe every five minutes yeah. because they don't get what they want right. when they want it. That's it. And we also need to model by our behavior, I'm sure, as well. I'm a good example of being bored at home sometimes, you know, <laughs> when I have a long day. It's great. Uh, they always see me. No, it's I'd fantastic. like to ask you how often that happens to you. <laughs> okay. I'm sure it's very rare. <laughs> Maybe once every three months. <laughs> so thank you very much, Nikki. What an informative topic. And remember, for all those uh, parenting needs, questions, stick with us here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show and connect with us also on our social media feeds if you have any question with regards to parenting and your young ones.